What's up, everybody? Welcome to Building Our Power. This is Gabby. And KT. And we're back with another episode. Thank you for checking out our last one entitled, All Working Class People Are Not Allies. If you would like to support the work we're doing in the city, you can do so. Link is in the description. If you would like to join us, you can. Link is in the description. We are going to continue part nine of Blood in My Eye. Um... We are on page 68 of the PDF, and we're starting back on the ambush. It says, The only form of attack employed by guerrilla forces is the ambush, the surprise attack. There must never be any front lines or defending of territory. The only engagements that are carried to completion are the ones that we are winning. After an initial attack, if the enemy regains himself and counterattacks, we disengage and simply go home to await the next opportunity when we can catch him asleep with his women moving in convoys or on the toilet. Camouflage. Nothing ever appears outwardly as it is. The armor, sheets of plastic or steel, is fixed inside the vans and trucks in such a way as to make them appear normal when viewed from without. The military safe house with tunnels leading in all directions and connecting with other houses, a storm drain, a manhole with bulletproof and airtight plexiglass window, encasements inside the house, camouflage with heavy curtains, rooms with doors that are really booby traps that work from the inside, must be made to look like any other house along the block. We must dress and equip ourselves with weaponry that will allow us to move even in units of a dozen or more, without appearing to be anything other than private citizens pursuing their private interests. We will make use of all forms of disguise, mailman, policeman, telephone repairman, priest, nun, national guardsmen. This principle will soon have them shooting at each other or turning the innocents against them. The result, perfect disorder. Autonomous Infrastructure If it is our eventual goal to wear away the establishment's ability to produce and distribute goods, to feed its war machine, or organize any sort of social activity, then of course, we must at the same time provide ourselves with the means of performing these functions on at least a subsistence level. Both the military and the political arms of the liberation movement must think of the provisioning of their vanguard elements and the people during the dark days when we stop the machine. Military supplies are stockpiled in advance with food staples. Depression days, foraging, and war years, liberation gardens must be reintroduced and refined. The military must depend on the people for food. It must also prepare to feed the people from the enemy supplies. Then you have the very healthy, spontaneous mass looting. Perfect disorder. At some point in the development Of the overall struggle, revolutionary culture, it will have to become totally independent of the old enemy culture in keeping with Che's theory of molding the new society around the struggle against the old. We will start from the beginning to build our own infrastructure in every possible area. People's stores, hospitals, banks, buses, army. This dual power, this building of political infrastructure and the military is distinctly stated by the Minister of Defense, Huey P. Newton. We recognize that in order to bring the people to the level of consciousness where they would seize the time, it would be necessary to serve their interests in survival by developing programs which would help them to meet their daily needs. Interesting. For a long time, we have had such programs not only for survival, but for organizational purposes. Now we, are not, now we not only have a breakfast program for school children, we have clothing programs, we have health clinics, which provide free medical and dental services, we have programs for prisoners and their families, and we are opening clothing and shoe factories to provide for more of the needs of the community. Most recently, we have begun a testing and research program on sickle cell anemia. And we know that 98% of the victims of that disease are black. To fail to combat this disease is to submit to genocide. To battle it is survival. All these programs satisfy the deep needs of the community, but they are not solutions to our problems. Interesting again. That is why we call them survival programs, meaning survival pending revolution. We say that the survival program of the Black Panther Party is like the survival kit of a sailor stranded on a raft. 
It helps him to sustain himself until he can completely get out of that situation. So the survival programs are not answers or solutions, but they will help us to organize the community around a true analysis and understanding of their situation. When consciousness and understanding is raised to a high level, then the community will seize the time and deliver themselves from the boot of their oppressors. Yeah, so um, that was from Huey P. P. Newton uh, from the book Black Capitalism Reanalyzed. I definitely think that's something that we should read. It's it's not actually a book. It says it's a from the Black Panther Intercommunal News Service on Saturday, June fifth, nineteen seventy one. We did it, one of our most popular episodes is about mutual aid, and we did talk about this where we were saying, like, you know, mutual aid that is currently going on is great and all, but we need something more, and we've got to move past that. And even, even in 1971, uh, Newton was saying that he was saying that. So I, I feel like there's been so much uh, misinformation, disinformation that has been pushed out. Um, in regards to propaganda and things like that, we've kind of lost the, um, we've, we've lost the plot pretty much. I don't think most people had the plot. Well, I mean that too. Yeah. Because a lot of us, a lot of us, and this isn't just George Floyd, because we can talk about that every day, but this is just in general. Ever since after the sixties and the liberalization of all this revolutionary shit, the new nonprofits have stepped in and mm-hmm. been like, we are taking care of everybody. And then they cloak themselves as if they're the community. Yeah. And they cloak themselves as if we're all we got. We're helping our brothers and sisters. They don't tell you who's funding it. They don't tell you wh- what those same companies are doing in our communities to help create the need for the nonprofit. And it's none of those things. So when we have th- times where people are getting quote unquote woke where they're seeing that, okay, so something's not right with capitalism like again like we said there's no framework for people to even know that this is something we should be basing it off of all we know is non-profits all we know is charity that's how everything runs here and so you did have and you do have people that are doing uh, in the communities and doing survival programs like they legitimately are saying this is for now but we are trying to organize people to start the revolution and you can tell in the way that they move it's a different it's a whole different mindset it's a whole different way of navigating the world and interacting with people because this isn't going to be a forever thing and they're also very uh very passionate about educating the people at the same time. And I feel like that's a litmus test too. Are you just giving something away and then that's the most you that's that's the only uh thing that you do. You don't educate anybody about nothing. It's just let me give you this. Well then this is charity again. And that's what it's easy to fall into those traps again because that's what we're used to. So it does have to you do kind of have to rewire your thinking into thinking that this is survival programs for needs that are that need to be met right now but yes this is all what we were talking about in a mutual aid episode i'm glad that huey newton and george jackson are confirming what we were talking about also that you just can't go out there and proselytize about these these uh, issues and think that that's going to work either you have to meet people's needs it's not enough to complain everybody's complaining yeah. Everybody knows that the eggs are too high. Everybody knows that we aren't getting paid enough. What are you doing differently that's going to make people see you different and not just some willy-nilly person on social media? So, yes, definitely. I love, uh, just going back a little bit further from the autonomous infrastructure, the camouflage, where he talks about we need to be disguised as mailman, policeman, telephone repairman, priest, nuns, National Guard. I love that. Because can you think about, like I'm just saying about like small time mailman. If we dressed up <laughs> as mailmen and uh, we went around putting propaganda in people's mailboxes, like that, that would just be something so simple 
you're not going to get in trouble or anything because people's just going to think you're a regular male person, right? Or even just a regular male person. We could pay someone to put extra stuff in people's uh, mailboxes and things along those lines. So I think... Yeah, be careful with the mailboxes. Well, I mean, yeah, of but course. Yeah, that but that is a that's good idea. A, that's just like a thought process that I'm thinking like as an example of what he's talking about. And the telephone repair man, the priest, mm-hmm. the nun, these priests, uh, these Jehovah Witnesses that are coming to doors, maybe they're not Jehovah Witnesses. Maybe they're revolutionary and they're going to tell you about what we're doing in the community in order to help people, you know, like for long-term support, not just today and tomorrow not just whenever there's a protest going on because i feel like there's so much that happens during protests and then the very moment those protests stop nothing happens after that the the people who organize those who who say they are community organizers i feel like once that protesting or that community organizing stops they do nothing more Cause it's just about the camera. It's just about the camera. If it's there just was about no the cameras, campaigning. would you be on the street? No, of course not. If nobody knew you was protesting, if a protester was in the middle of the forest with nobody to see it, would they still be protesting? But that's that's kind of what he's talking about. Like the camouflage to me, it's like, yeah, that's what needs to happen. It doesn't. It doesn't have to be this grand show of display where you're showing yourself off to the cameras, to the social media, to the whatever. You can literally just go out there and do it. Yeah. You don't have to tell the world. You don't have to say anything. Just do it. Yeah. Yeah, but... Yeah, definitely. And that this also, yeah, we were talking about just talking to people and getting propaganda out there. That would be a great tactic as well. And he was talking about, too, like the, the military people uh, using that as disguises because one of the goals that we're trying to do is create, what do you say, perfect disorder? Perfect disorder. Perfect disorder, a.k.a. get these people to see, open their eyes, get them to see again for the gazillion time that you cannot trust this government and this system they are not there to protect us if they think you are a suspect you will be gone like everybody else so that's kind of what it is i mean people would say that that's not right that's not whatever but that's literally the only time people care that's literally the only time people get their heads out of their ass is when they figure and they see oh my concept of reality isn't exactly how I thought it was. Actually, things aren't as uh, black and white as I thought. Wait, I don't, you know, that's really the only time you get folks stirred up. And that's why the protests and stuff could be great times to get people mobilized and, and, and organized. But, you know, it, it hasn't been used that way. One last thing I want to talk about with the camouflage where he talks about the military safe house with tunnels leading in all directions and connecting with other houses. A storm drain, a manhole with bulletproof and airtight plexiglass window, encasements inside their house camouflaged with heavy curtains, rooms, and doors that are really booby traps and work from the inside must be made to look like any other house along the block. How do we think, how do we honest to God think that back in the day, they were getting enslaved people out of slavery. They had the houses. We got to have the houses. We got to have something like that. We got to have something so people are safe. And so I feel like the military safe houses, that's just a starting point. It could be something way bigger than that. The following strategy, we at once, quote, feel a very real vacuum, unquote, that already exists in the black colony, brown and poor white too where the people are not being fed, clothed, provided with adequate medical treatment or transportation facilities. This will create the consciousness that comes from the introduction of people's government. It will help people to understand the force and energy of revolution. Quote, we are organizing them around their needs, unquote. We will not distract them with such empty questions as who will be elected from which political party. All political parties, as things stand, will support the power complex. Any individual elected will either be a supporter of the established politics or an, quote, individual. What would help us, in fact, is to allow as many right-wing elements as possible to assume political power. The warnings that, quote, our thrust towards self-determination will bring on fascism, unquote, are irresponsible or better unrealistic. The fascists already have 
power. The point is that some way must be found to expose them and combat them. An electoral choice of 10 different fascists is like choosing which way one wishes to die. (laughs) The holder of so-called high public office is always merely an extension of the hated ruling corporate class. It is to our benefit that this person be openly hostile, despotic, and unreasoning. We are not living in a nation where left-wing parties hold 80 out of the 200 seats in congressional body, or even 8 out of 200. This is a huge nation dominated by the most reactionary and violent ruling class in the history of our world, where majority of the people just simply cannot understand that they are existing on the misery and discomfort of the world. They have been hypnotized into believing that criticism of the expansionist policies of imperialism is really isolationist or injurious to both the USA and the world. We are faced with two choices, to continue as we have done for 40 years, banning our pamphlets against the hurricane, or starting to build a new revolutionary culture that will be able to turn on the old culture. Collectively, we have that choice. The black colony as it sits out here alone has no such choice. In a report from Jonathan Jackson in early 1970, he said, We are not going to wait until the USA attacks the people of the USA or Angola, Mozambique, or any of the other African nations in foment. We can't wait. We shouldn't even allow this thing to happen in Indochina. Bank of America, Chase Manhattan, First National City Bank of New York, Irving Trust Company, the Morgan Monopoly, Manufacturers Hanover Trust, Continental 3, National Bank, First National Bank of Chicago, Bankers Trust Co., and a dozen lesser firms all have great financial interest in the USA now. In 1966, the USA investment in one small African nation was $667 million. It's almost doubled since then. In 1968, 70 to 75% of all goods from the USA entered the USA duty-free. Soon we'll be asked to fight the people of the USA because they're getting their people's army together. No, I'm not waiting for them to attack a new part of Africa or Asia. I'm entering the war now on the side of the Vietnamese. The black colony USA has little choice. We must enter the war on the side of the majority of the world's people, even if it means fighting the USA majority. We fight to live, and we're learning to fight. It will be a war to the knife if necessary. We can't wait until the generation that thinks of blacks as niggers and the rest of the world as gooks, chinks, spicks, etc. has been educated away. It may be the reverse that happens. We niggers and gooks may be blown away first. Or if we survive, what will we inherit? A desert? We'll mass what people we can. Perhaps that won't be the whole lower class. We'll mass ourselves and any ally we may be able to draw from the whole class structure and will attempt to wage a war on property and property rights. Essentially, that is the fight. But even then, some men will die as in all forms of war. But if we cannot draw the support that is necessary for such war, then we see a positive benefit for the majority of the world in the reduction of this whole country to a vast wasteland and a graveyard for 200 million of history's most damnable fools. Okay, that is page 74. Uh, And then we will go back and talk about some of this stuff because, you know, we had to talk about it. Interesting. Interesting in the, 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 the topics of, of, of this year. <laughs> the topics of the past two years. Apparently, there's this new thing uh, going around in America. It's called a fascist. And apparently, this is the first time they've ever come. They've been hiding. Um, actually, they haven't even been here. No. Uh, they were just in Germany. And then they popped up all of a sudden. And people are scared. And, um, you know, people are saying that, you know, you have to go to the polls to get rid of them. <laughs> the polls <laughs> is like the kryptonite to a fascist. <sighs> you go and you cast your vote and the fascist disappears. The truth is, these people do not know what fascism even means. They don't know what fascists are. They don't understand uh, the process of which fascists take over and they themselves are fascists at the end of the day like a lot of these people would be in support of fascism if you listen to what they are actually saying so yeah it's it's a wreck it is a wreck 
if okay but just look, we're going back to this guy this is like <laughs> 1970s it's like 50 plus years ago the dude said that the voting wouldn't work with the fascists right and so now we're here and you see, you see how it didn't work 50 years ago but you're saying do it again so that in 50 years it won't work some more I just, I don't, that's why, like, sometimes, you know, I don't know if you guys are ever, like, on social media, like, Facebook or whatever, you start talking to those older liberals, and so you're talking to them, and you ask them, how long have you been voting? They're like, well, for 30-something years. Have you ever fundamentally, materially seen anything in your life change? Well, no. So what makes you think, like mentally, like what is going on up there that makes you think that this will be the time? Because they will tell you that. They'll be voting for 30 plus years and will tell you, well, we don't know. This is somebody different. I feel like by putting a different face to it, people think like individualistically this person is different. When in actuality, it doesn't matter what face is at the front of fascism. It's still fascism. I think Obama helped. I think Obama helped people uh, just stay in the illusion. Because you remember, he came right after Bush. And people were starting to be, mm, they were at work, war, war on terror. Maybe was that not real? Wait, the president can lie? Wait, they can lie to go into war? All that. And then Obama came. And it's just like everybody forgot that America, literally before our eyes, was lying to us, was taking away our rights. They smiled when when Obama helped to to sign away our rights with all that bullshit, and was over there bombing people. It, it doesn't matter. Maybe that's the reason why you can only be in office for four years because, or eight years, I guess I should say, you can only be in there for eight years because after eight years, people start to like. There's a different generation that's looking at this and saying, "Whoa, wait." a second this isn't right and so then they need to put somebody else's face there like maybe that's a conspiracy but you know but yes and like i said that's why i was saying like people that are still like really into politics you have to be a privileged person yeah and to be a liberal and to just be out and proud about that, you're, you're just coming from a place of privilege. And it may be a big privilege or a little privilege. But if you can literally come today and smile in my face and say things are good and things would be, be things are better than they would be up under Trump. Or we had to do this and we had to do that. Then you literally, you're, we're not even on the same playing mm-hmm. field. That's what I'm saying. Like, we're talking about, that's what we have to realize. We're talking about revolution. Like, everything as you know it is going to be not here no more. We're talking about a whole different life. We're talking about you losing your place in society and literally being on the same plane as everybody. We're not even on the same plane. You're saying, well, maybe maybe in 10 years you can get a raise for $100 as a bonus maybe one year, and and you call that a win. I'm saying let's get rid of the cash system altogether. Let's let's create a a system where all you have to do is work and you live. Like, uh, so we're not even on the same thing. So, yes, but that's the type of people that we're engaging with. And even, like, this is off topic, but we're going back to, like, when they were talking about, you know, they got to be nice to the men. You got to be <laughs> nice to the men so they don't go down the alt-right pipeline. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're on whole different planes. <laughs> You're saying be nice. We're talking about tanks and, and, and weapons and stuff. Literally. And booby traps and, and camouflage. We, there's no time for that because we're we're not on the same thing. Not saying that this is a totally emotionalist, hate everybody thing. But if we can't even agree on the number one concept that everybody is equal, period. Like George Jackson said, some people just will not make it. Yeah. Some people just ain't going to ever make it. And you have to, you have to just deal with those losses and get to this. Y'all have spent five years debating people online. Making millions, debating, reacting. What money have you put to doing this shit we talking about? Have you even thought about that? Is that even in your mind? Or do you think you just going to get rich and live off this this fantasy of, of thinking that you can just uh, uh, educate people into being good people and then we'll have socialism one day? Is that what you're going to do till you die? I think it is. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that there are some people like... 
uh, I hate to name them, but like Jimmy Dore, Hassan Ami, like literally people, men, majority of the time, who are at the top of these uh, so-called leftist podcast thought whatever, I, I feel like they just, they don't get it. And they'll never get it. And they'll never understand. And they'll never be able to get to the point where they're going to be talking about things like this, where they destroy it. Because if they did, that would ultimately put them at the bottom of society. And they would no longer be able to make money based off of what they're talking about. You can only go so far, right? The I feel a lot the mansion. No, like these people, I feel like even even people who are on the radio, people who even us sometimes, like there's only so far that you can go with these conversations before there's got to be some kind of action behind it. Why are you still why are you still talking about why are you still debating, talking about it? Debating exactly. is the ra- is racism real? Is why are y'all surreal? even having those conversations? What are you have millions of dollars. We're literally folks is scrapping off twenty here, thirty here to try to just give uh, money away or to try to organize stuff for people or try to give clothes away, and you're talking about does racism exist? You no, that's no. it's it's like a kindergartner <laughs> versus a twelfth grader. Like there's there's like the kindergartner. <laughs> Do you want to be my friend? And then the the, the twelfth grader. What is the the how to fix it? It's just like, it's just there's <laughs> so much there that they're missing that they they're never going to look into and well, they don't want they don't want to it's that's by design that's what i was gonna say it's by design that they're never gonna look into it and maybe even like there's certain people that i look at like uh uh brianna joy gray oh, Lord God. she has the information but she makes her money off of pretending that she doesn't know and or well, playing both sides or what, of, what if isms you know what i'm saying like like there there are people who know it but even then it's like well if i say just a little too much it might bring me down i'm gonna lose money i'm gonna lose money so that's right. why nobody right. you should not be there's no such thing as no leftist i'm i'm sorry there's no such thing as no, no. leftist entertainment news channel because no. you're basing everything as a base off profits what if we like us we're reading this book. A lot of people ain't listening. No, nope. like some people don't care because this ain't entertainment. Whatever. But if we were making money off this, we couldn't do this. We couldn't do this because we would lose sponsors. We lose revenue money. We lose ad. We lose all this stuff. You cannot base a career off educating the people. That's what, what the hell? Did, like, what did George Jackson them had? Yeah, I take my uh. My class, my education class, I'm charging $50 a month. 250 Or they're getting on, George Jackson will be on some kind of, like, television show, like, uh, not television show, but the master class, like Angela Davis. Like, what if, what if this information was put in like that? That is, it's just like, capitalism is bad, and when you try to intertwine so-called revolutionary uh, whatever, with the capitalism, it's no longer revolutionary. Yeah, you should be getting your funds from something else, not something tied to this. That this should not be intertwined with that because that is very, very. You're now you're that's that's going to incentivize you to start navigating like a nonprofit to start navigating like these capitalist structures. Yeah. You can't do that. This is this is a work of love, a work of passion. And if money and you getting profits off of doing this, then it leaves a lot of ground for a lot of exploitation to occur in this field. So this, I don't even know how we got on that. And uh, about our Patreon. (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. Uh, If you would like to uh, (laughs) donate to the Patreon, you can. Uh, but obviously, we don't have no patrons. Exactly. And so, you know, <laughs> we do this thing regardless because we are learning at the same time. Yeah. Like, that's why we keep up the uh, our old episodes from Talk About Podcast 2016. So you can hear how terrible of liberals me specifically was. And KT was like <laughs> a sock damn. And you can see the progression of 
us coming into the ideas of uh, communism, and your anarchism, and militancy, and the trajectory of the type of topics we talked about started to change, and the way we started to think started to change. But we had to completely devoid money and uh, any type of profit from doing this type of stuff because, yeah. Yeah. I mean, even, I don't know, uh, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's pretty much it. Well, uh, guys, thank you so much for listening. That you got a little taste of the rant. We ain't running in a, in a minute. <laughs> uh, but yes, you like hit us up and do so at building our PWR on our social media channels. If you like to hit us up, you can do so. Link is in the description. If you like to join us in in person, uh, to do uh, well, we're going we're back working on. Or we're gonna start back working on the propaganda. We also have a meeting with somebody to talk a little bit about arms. We're going to be doing something with that very soon. You can do so. Link is in the description. Thank you, everybody, for listening. This has been Gabby. And KT. And this has been Building Our Power.